And today my topic is about the management of fishing vessels along the Guangdong coastal waters. Uh, so most of the uh, people, they are concentrated on the fish date in China, especially their catch. And uh, as for me, I'm more concerned on the fishing boats, the numbers, their power, the, the, the distribution uh, between province, because this one is uh, fixed and uh, confirmed. Uh, if we know, uh, if we want to manage the fishermen's behavior, we want to know more details about on the uh, fish, uh, ves fishing vessels. So I would like to introduce my report in uh, 44 uh, subtitles. First is the roles of fishing vessels in fisheries management. Second is the China's fishing efforts and catch their position in the world. And the three is the profile of Guangdong's fisheries. As I worked in uh, Guangdong Water University, and uh, so I want to know more about the, the Guangdong's fisheries and the fishing vessels. Uh, the fourth is the, the main working contents of the fishing vessels management, like uh, what they are doing in the fish, fisheries and administrative uh, officers or the workers, what they are doing now. And uh, from uh, six years, uh, uh, five years uh, sampling and uh, uh, in interchange the views with the fishermen and uh, the fisheries officers. Uh, I concluded some uh, challenges in the fishing efforts management. Uh, so I want to share my opinions and uh, want to ask you guys if you have uh, some opinion to how to manage the fisheries in China. Uh, that will be better video. So let's go to the first. Uh, we all know the fisheries roles is highlighted annually in the FAO report, and uh, especially in uh, eliminating hunger, uh, promoting health, and reducing poverty. And in tw 2014, the water per capita fish supply has climbed to a, a new high record of 20 kilograms per person. And that means uh, every people can share the capita of 20 kilograms. but uh, more than half is from the agriculture, so I will give more details later. Uh, there are more than 800 people still in the world that continue to suffer chronic malnourishment. Uh, and uh, by 2050, uh, the, people, the population in the world will reach to 9.6 billion, that means mm, 12, uh, 2 billion more people in the world. So we are uh, facing huge challenges or feeding our planet while safeguarding its natural resources for future generations. That's what we are calling about uh, sustainable development, especially in the fisheries. Uh, uh, in my opinion, I, I would like to understand the fisheries management like this. Uh, we all know that fish at the ocean, uh, we want to catch uh, on our meal or uh, on our table in the market. So the fishermen and, uh, use their, their fishing vessel, their, their tools, is the most important part in uh, fisheries management and uh, fisheries uh, fishing activities. And uh, like our research and management, both want to uh, manage uh, sustainably or want to more details. And uh, like our research institutions or want to provide more insights or suggestions to the uh, fisheries and uh, to the catch uh, date. Uh, so uh, there are huge gaps between the uh, fishing activities and the research and also the management goals between the research and uh, that's three parts are not so integrated. So many problems uh, exist in the three parts, like the stock assessment or sustainable we still have uh, many problems. That since uh, 1950s, uh, from the Europe, the, the stock assessment, they approve is not so useful, not so, it's not used in the fisheries management. So we are trying to find another models to evaluate the fisheries data. 
uh, let's see the global uh, total capital fisheries production in 2014 is worth 93 million tons and 87% uh, of the uh, catch is from uh, marine waters. Uh, so the China uh, still uh, remain the major producers is followed by Indonesia, US, Russian federations. Uh, here I show the the top 12 producers in the world, that's marine capital productions. Uh, we see that China is the rank the top, and then Indonesia, US, and uh, the last, uh, the 12 is Philippines. So, that is the, I want to say more about the China's fishing efforts. Uh, like uh, in China, uh, the 2014s, the total fishing vessels uh, in the world is 4.6 uh, billion and uh, the fleet uh, in Asia was largest, the 3.5 million so it's accounting for 75 uh, three quarters of the uh, global fleet and uh, 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 globally 64 percent of reported fishing vessels were end empowered in 2014 and uh, also there are 85 percent of the world's most wide fish vessels were less than 12 meters in length of oval. That means 80% uh, of the fishing vessels worked in the coastal waters uh, is less than 20 meters, uh, the depth, or at most uh, 30, like this. They cannot go to the uh, distant waters or the open seas because they are uh, fishing the capacity there and uh, the length of uh, over the length of the vessel is cannot work there. So the main characters are small boats with endings. Uh, and let's go to the know the understand the China fishing vessels in 2014. The total number is uh, more than 1 million uh, and with the power of 22 million kilowatts. It's accounting for 23 percent of global total fleet and uh, accounted for 30% of Asian fleets. Uh, and uh, in this one, more than 1 million uh, fishing vessels, the motorized fishing vessels accounted for 64%. Uh, let's, let's see the percentage of Chinese fishing vessels. Uh, we can see that 65% of fishing vessels are, are take the actions of fishing that's a traditional fishing, like pursuing, trawling, uh, gill netting, etc. And uh, there are 31% uh, is agriculture aiding, like they transport the uh, uh, the, the the fish, uh, the agriculture fish baits, and uh, transporting the their fish products and the people to culture the in the cages, like the, just to help agriculture this. And there are four percent vessels of fishing aided. Uh, they are include three parts. First is uh, the aid fishing vessels such as purse seniors, they need to small boats to help fishing. And uh, the boats of landing and the transporting from uh, the catch to land and uh, to the port. Uh, as so many fishing vessels, they cannot uh, land uh, their catch uh, to the port uh, straightly. They have uh, to uh, use the uh, they have to need the help of the fishing aid uh, boats. In the uh, streets, the fisheries administrative vessels, that means for monitor the legal fishing or to check the fish. And uh, here I would like to show the provincial distribution of Chinese vessels uh, and the powers in 2014. Uh, maybe you guys want to ask me is why you use the date in 2014. And later, because it's uh, close related to the fields of the cities, and we will talk about it later. We can see that the numbers of the uh, of fishing vessels in Jiangsu rank first, and the Zhejiang their power fishing total fishing power rank first. Uh, let's see the Guangdong they are ranked uh, three, and then uh, in the fishing vessels and uh, their uh, total. Fishing power is drunk to force. 
And here the data is not included the Taiwan province because uh, most of their uh, their fishing vessels they include in the distant waters fishing in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, we'd like to see the uh, the fishing vessels of uh, Guangdong province is same like uh, in the, uh, China, I think. Yeah. Uh, so like the the total uh, distribution for China, so the also is fishing in coastal waters and uh, uh, causes the higher pressure uh, pressure on coastal fisheries. This program is the China, I think. It is. So uh, in recent years, the on the national levels, the management strategies are like this. We want to uh, implement the double control on fishing boats. That we want to uh, fish control the fishing efforts and uh, uh, meantime we want to control the or decrease the quality of the uh, total vessels and uh, if that is we want to uh, reduce the fishing efforts uh, on the national level so in future we want to use the TAC management uh, uh, schemes and, and then now we are in trial in crab shells uh, are in trial Uh, so we want to promote the uh, double control measures. Uh, the government offer incentive policies. Uh, that yesterday some professor they mentioned this. These are several cities. Uh, we want to cut down small boats less than 12 meters. Uh, that means uh, they will. We won't give them a, a few several cities. And uh, we are encourage uh, the people, uh, the fishermen, to create a longer or higher power fishing boats since uh, 2012. And uh, the second uh, uh, policy is, as for the older vessels, that they are 20 years older or then more, uh, we won't give them subsidies uh, in the end of this year. Uh, so we want to uh, improve the fishing vessels and their equipment and the, to keep their safety. Uh, the problems uh, during the operation is some fishing enterprises owners uh, they try to get more subsidies by making big vessels. Uh, so they cheated the government. They uh, because these uh, incentive policies, uh, the fisheries uh, and administration officers they uh, ask the new fishing vessel owners has two negotiations like uh, where they will catch, uh, they will uh, take their fishing and uh, they, do they have uh, negotiations with other countries in their coastal waters. Uh, so uh, these guys may cheat the government and want to uh, get their few subsidies and uh, so there are problems and now the government no more encourage uh, to apply for the new and the higher bigger vessels. So the government almost uh, stopped uh, doing this. And then now is uh, the government are decreasing the subsidies that are straight to vessel owners. Before we provided the fuel subsidies to the fish owners strictly, and then now we are considering more on natural resources and uh, ecosystem resources. We move a part of the subsidies to the ecosystem resources. Uh, that may be good news for research uh, so I'd like to introduce the Guangdong province, the profile. Uh, there, there are 42, uh, for 420,000 hectares sea waters and has a coastline of 4,000 kilometers. And uh, there are 136 uh, fishing ports totally. And uh, we have, uh, the Guangdong has the fish, first the top level of 10 and uh, there are other second uh, level top uh, is uh, categorized uh, by their uh, uh, place and their infrastructures, the scale of infrastructure. Uh, here I uh, mark the 10 top levels of the fishing uh, ports. Uh, it's from eastern uh, Guangdong to the Po River and uh, to the western Guangdong waters. So we can see that uh, we call it uh, one axis. Uh, there are uh, 
composed of 10 top level fishing ports. Uh, the government wants to integrate the between ports to promote the local uh, economy. So you can see that these are Eastern Guangdong uh, districts has uh, included 32 ports and the Po River uh, includes 52. Uh, that means the second level or the third level, there are small ports. The Western Guangdong has uh, 42, uh, 52. So, uh, also I want to mention about the, the, the Guangdong government want to, depending on the Guangdong, Hong Kong and the Macau, cooperation in the development of a greater Bay Area. So, the government uh, want to integrate the fishing ports, uh, their fishing capacity and uh, their roles in the fishing or in uh, uh, transporting of the fishing materials uh, like to integrate this and uh, as for the Po River and the Western Guangdong uh, they are included in the Pan Bay Gulf Economic Belt so the, the Greater Bay Area and the Economic Belt uh, both their actions are uh, responsive actions on promoting the Belt and the Road Initiative so the government want to uh, promote the development of local economy and uh, to cooperate with uh, South Asian countries uh, together. So we call it the optimization of spatial development of fishing ports. Uh, there are in 2014, uh, 60, 64, uh, thousand reject vessels with power of uh, two, two million kilowatts. It had decreased in 1,800 uh, vessels in 2003. And the uh, additional water vessels is 170 in Guangdong, around the six. Uh, so the traditional fishermen in Guangdong is 270,000. Uh, there are uh, the main contents of fishing vessel management include uh, five parts. First is the regulation of dispatch of fuel subsidies for fishing, and the second is uh, registration and uh, annual ship equipment checking for working safety. Also is the annual uh, fishing license and uh, collect their conservation fee. Also they are monitoring land catch and uh, log sheet checking. Uh, the last two are not work well. Uh, as for the fuel subsidies history, I would uh, like to say more. This is uh, a kind of a policy for tax refunding to fishing. Uh, in 2006, the tax policy reform, they added the fees of highway uh, maintenance to the fuel price. But the f fishing vessel, they don't use the highway. So the government need to pay back the fuel subsidies for three industries sectors when using fuels. First is the fishing vessels and also the forestry when they are using oil, oil and uh, promote the remote rural areas economic development. So these are the three. And uh, to 2014, uh, there are huge uh, millions of Chinese yuan to provide to the fishing vessels. Uh, there are positive effects, but more negative effects. They get uh, exact fishing vessel details, either for management of vessel and uh, the fishermen would like to uh, do the legal fishing because if they find they are found found they take the illegal fishing, they uh, they will the government will cancel their subsidies. And the negative is the price of vessels climb up dramatically. It's become a hard spot of investment, and the higher fishing pressures on the marine fisheries. There are more resistance on decreasing fishing effort and uh, more dependence on fuel subsidies the, or the fishery and also cause a heavier burden to the government budget and uh, also it's disturbed the market price of the marine catch so now the government are optimized and uh, cuts down the fuel subsidies like i mentioned before we want to move a part of money to the uh, ecosystem restoration like uh, the scrap fishing boat the government buy from the fishermen and they give them money. Uh, the the fishermen don't, uh, they won't uh, uh, continue fishing. So like uh, 2,500 per kilowatts, now it's 5,000. Uh, 
There are measures of fishing vessel subsidies like uh, this. It's 80% for ship equipment review, and 80% will uh, decrease uh, year by year. And uh, in 2019, they decreased to 40%. Maybe will become zero in future. Uh, so uh, the fishing, uh, the main challenge is we are fishing now is uh, we are facing now is. Uh, First is the fishing method change, but the fishermen are not updated timely management system. And uh, second is the I, IUU problem, it's difficult to management. We call it straight no vessels, like no fishing license, no vessel name, no safety certificate. And uh, some fishing aided boats, they uh, join the illegal fishing. That's the main problem. And the third is the most of fishermen, they are low level literacy. They are aging, and uh, also there are uh, obstacles to fishing management updates. Uh, so we, the last uh, difficulties we are facing is the data sharing between researchers and institutions. Uh, we are lack of long time date, so it's obstacles we are TAC research. And the uh, conclusion is like this, uh, uh, I'd like to say is every step in fishing management contribute greatly to the world fishery system development. We want to do more, uh, although we are facing so many uh, challenges, uh, we would like to cooperate with our colleagues sincerely. And uh, I would like to thank the special funds for agricultural department and my lab mem members. And, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now the floor is open for questions. Thank you. Um, thank you for your talk. I have a question. You mentioned very briefly about e money going, maybe more money going to ecosystem-based management. And you mentioned also briefly about um, habitat restoration. I just wonder if you could expand a little bit on, on that. Uh, those, those areas, please. Okay, thank you for your question. Now the government will want to uh, decrease the subsidies to the f uh, fish owners year by year. Like uh, now is 12% uh, will shift uh, from the fish owners to the uh, how do you say to the uh, ecosystem restoration and the habitat restoration. But this uh, ecosystem restoration is a uh, whole project. It's a system. Uh, and uh, now they are the government ask uh, like a research institute. They have to. Uh, when they uh, applying for the, pr uh, when they writing the proposals, they have to cooperate. So they want to design from the west to, uh, to from the east to the west, and also it, uh, how to say, is planned uh, in the like the fish reefs, uh, and uh, some are for the uh, basic infrastructure improvement of the fishing ports. Like uh, every year, about 20, 12 percent of the money will arrange the, to these sectors uh, totally, and then they will uh, sector to species, maybe arranged uh, to different parts like this. Uh, I was just wondering, sort of in terms of ecosystem um, or, or habitat restoration, does that mean does that mean marine protected areas? Does it mean artificial yeah. reefs? Does it mean, what, what kind of measures, general measures, might be, might be relevant? Like some money for the uh, evaluation of the marine protected areas, like uh, we, we, we set up many protected areas, but some are not so worked. Is it before, is it we just uh, uh, circle some place, but it's not so scientific. Now we want to re-evaluate re this. And uh, some, are, some money will uh, put to the restocking or stocking enhancement and uh, some money for the uh, basic research. Uh, like uh, my work is about the fisheries poli management policies or like this and uh, some for the natural experiments to to know more details uh, the basic uh, the natural science uh, research like this. Maybe, um, I can ask a question. The first question is that in your presentation a number of uh, motorized fishing vessels, which is about 600,000 plus. I was wondering whether it's increased about to the ocean volume fishing 
may as well include uh, fresh water between these casinos. And uh, in the later part of your presentation, you mentioned uh, the issues related to the top of three, uh, three of ships, black ships. Do you have a rough estimate about the number of black ships? Black ships? Oh, sorry, no. Uh, no, we don't have the, how to say, the exact numbers, uh, but we know it's a fact in, from the, uh, the, the, the yellow sea, or in the coast waters, ever have, but it's, it's just the question of numbers, I see. And <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I'm not so concerned about the, the, the fishing vessels inland, because they, their fishing, the, the power of fishing vessel is very small, and only two or three f fishermen are. You know, just catch I mean, the number you provided, whether it includes the freshwater fishing vessel, or is just no. about no. six? Uh, only, only, only the marine waters, the fishing vessels. Yeah, the total number is 600,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, marine waters. But, um, these, these fishing boats work in uh, marine, marine waters, yeah. I understand that um, some fishermen, some fishing boats are involved with the maritime militia. Just wondering whether you can expand upon that, how widespread it is, and, and what's the relationship with the government? Uh, so, 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 sorry? Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, just may, maybe Professor John mentioned this problem. Uh, as, as far as I know, like uh, in a standoff between the Vietnam, in the, you know, in the political area that everybody, uh, uh, you know, interested in the area. And uh, it's just a part of a time, you know, that uh, the two countries maybe have the chance to, uh, to, to the war or like this. And uh, they have this, but the, the fishermen, like the military arms, they don't uh, take the fishing. It's just for two or three crews and that's it. And then now, because the, you know that China's uh, department are reforming and uh, integrating from this, and uh, they don't need to pretend to be fishermen now. And they like to be the safeguard of the marine policy, or I don't know how to translate this. So we have the uh, administrative legal, and we just uh, cruise uh, in the disputed waters, maybe. Uh, so that's not, no more a problem. Uh, uh, yeah, it's before they have this, oh, only some cruises, but now they don't need to pretend to fishermen now. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the talk. Okay, thank you.